writing my PhD dissertation right now, and it feels like it's been going on for forever, and it has been going on for forever, but it's been going a lot more smoothly since I found something called the Zettelkasten technique for note taking and knowledge management. The thing is, though, that nobody really tells you how to do a PhD. No one even really tells you how to do an undergrad. You just you just go do it. Or at least no one ever really told me how to do school, and I have been trying to figure it out ever since, especially in the PhD writing phase, when many students in the arts and humanities especially are just left alone to write however you do that. So to try to help you feel less lost and confused than I have over the course of my degrees, I am trying to really show you how I am doing my PhD, as in not just telling you, but really showing you how I read, write, research, note take, etc. So in this video, I want to take you along for another PhD note taking session. And this time it's sponsored by Skillshare, a great alternative learning platform. But more on them later, for now, I'm going to take you into my obsidian, which is where I take all of my notes on my PhD. We are here in my obsidian, and to contextualize this, before I found the Zettelkasten technique of note taking, I took my notes in a really disorganized, messy way, and I can no longer find those notes because they would be high highlighted in the literal text and not put anywhere else, or it would be handwritten notes in a notebook that are kind of illegible to me now and basically useless. And that was the case for my notes on this book, Performing Remains by Rebecca Schneider. This is a seminal text in theater and performance studies. It's one that I've read before and one that I'm increasingly thinking will be a big part of my PhD dissertation. So I knew that I'd have to go back to this text and take notes that are actually legible and usable on it. And so I did. And that is what you're looking at now. What I do for this process is I read the texts in Zotero. I highlight those texts in Zotero. Zotero, and then I paste all of the highlights and notes into Obsidian. And that's where we're starting today. All of the notes and highlights have already been pasted into Obsidian, and I'm going to go and make notes on the quotes that I have found within the text specifically on three chapters of this book that I found most relevant. Now, if you don't know how to use Zotero or you're not sure what the Zettelkasten method is, or you just want more info on how to read, write, take notes, do research, etc., then I highly recommend this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on every topic imaginable, and it lets you save interesting courses so you can learn at your own pace. And yes, they do have a course on Zotero and a few on Settlecasting, and some from legitimate professors on how to do academic writing, and quite a few on productivity from the YouTuber Ali Abdal that I am particularly excited to get to myself. However, Skillshare is not just a learning platform for productivity, it also teaches many creative skills. And personally, when I am taking a break from my PhD writing, I like to get creative, but I don't always know where to start with these skills. Things like sewing my own clothes, or crocheting and knitting, or watercolor painting are things I'm particularly interested in. And Skillshare has numerous courses on all of those topics that are very high quality. The one that I have started and I'm particularly excited about right now is one called Sewing Sewing Alterations with the clothing designer Mora Marks, which starts from the absolute basics and is making it feel more achievable for me to shop secondhand because I know that I can make things fit me perfectly when I take them home. If you are interested in joining Skillshare as well, then please use my link below because the first 500 people that use that link are going to get 30 days free of Skillshare and then 40% off your first full year of Skillshare membership, and this is one of the best deals that they have on offer. So if you've always wanted to check out Skillshare, but you're not sure you want to commit to the full membership, then just go for that free month using my link below and try out a couple courses, maybe the one on Settlecaston from Curtis McHale. I highly recommend and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's head back into my Obsidian to see what I do after I'm done the reading itself. The first thing I do after reading and importing my notes into Obsidian is writing a brief synopsis of the text. 
text. That way, years down the road, when I have completely forgotten everything that happened in the entire book, I can just pop into this note and I can get a brief introduction to it that is in my own words and expresses like the things about this text that are significant to me specifically. So here I've written Schneider's book is about the time of performance and theater. And then I've quoted from her introduction where she said in brief what the book is trying to do. Basically, I'm just trying to write down what I remember from this text in an overarching way right after I've read it. So I've referenced some important theorists she's working with, some central research questions she's trying to answer and that kind of thing. And then I'll go start actually creating atomic Tettelkasten notes. To do this, I start going through the quotes to see what I can turn into my own personal knowledge or what ideas are not yet in my Tettelkasten and things that I want to think with further and develop into my own ideas in my own contexts. In this case, in the first quote, there is an important idea that may seem obvious within my field, which is the idea that performance is aligned with the present and the immediate. And this is such an obvious concept to me as a performance studies scholar that I didn't even have a note about it in my Obsidian. But I think that every idea, no matter how basic it seems, is worth making an atomic note about it, which means that it is short and self-contained and modular so that I can use that note in whatever context I need it in, whatever project I'm working on. And because this idea that performance is aligned with the live is such a a basic idea by which I don't mean simple, I just mean it is self-contained and integral to a lot of thought about performance, I probably want a dedicated note about it. And once I found a quote that I want to create its own note for, I use the community plugin Note Refactor, which is by James Lynch. And this plugin lets me highlight a piece of text and then click Control Shift C to cut it from this note and paste it automatically into a new note. And then I also get the opportunity to name that note before it is created. In this case, I am calling this note Performance Thought Aligns It With The Live, which I think is a really wordy and ugly name for this note, but sometimes I can't think of the best words when I make the note originally, and that's fine. Sometimes it's easier to name the note after you have written the note because then you actually know what this note is about. So once I'm in the new note and the only thing populating this note is a quote from the original book, what do I do? Almost always I start by writing out the words in the source, and I link it, the author, and I say their name, writes, and then I leave the quote there. This way I ensure that I know where this quote came from. But after that, of course, I explain the concept in my own words to make sure that I understand it and to help myself later when I am writing an essay or something in my own words. Well, now I already have some of those words. I also try to link as many relevant topics as possible to this note so that I can always find my way back to this note when I'm needing it, which is going to be in the context of other notes that are related to it. So if I link those notes in here, I'm always going to be able to see back here when I'm in those other notes. In this case, I have linked the words performance studies, performance, liveness. Um, there's a source that's already in my Tuttlecaston, so a an actual text that popularized the idea that performance is live. I've also tagged other theorists that have disagreed with this idea and a related idea, which is um, that performance disappears. So now I have re-articulated the concept that performance is often thought about alongside presentism and immediacy, while also pointing towards a lot of context that might help me understand how this concept came to be and how it works. And this type of note is going to be great when you're trying to write something like a literature review, because all the info you need is right there. But it's also very useful when you're trying to learn something new for the first time and trying to understand what it is connected to. And finally, it might just help you develop arguments in your writing because you have this really kind of isolated idea that you can link anything else to. And in fact, some things are already linked to it. So that's going to give you even more ideas. Next up in this video, I'm doing exactly the same type of thing. Instead, this is an obvious follow up note to the previous one, actually, where now it's a note about how people have questioned that performance is live. So of course, I'm going to link the note that I just made because it is so directly relevant to this. And here you can see that I'm not necessarily linking just individual words or sources, but I'm dealing with some more difficult ideas, some more lengthy 
concepts, and that might just be because this is a more complicated or contested idea, or it might just be because I've written more about this concept in my subtle cast and already, so there's already more things and ideas to link to. Okay, I'm going in and making another note now, and this is another idea that is fairly obvious to me as a theatre studies scholar, and so I didn't hasn't made a note about it. It creates the base of theatre studies, but that does not mean that it's not worth putting in my system. In fact, that probably means it's more important to put in my system. And that is the idea that theatre is live and present. This is something that I've always been taught, that theatre is separate from recording and things like film because it happens in time. So the fact that theatre is a temporal medium is a bit of a given, but it's still worth writing down so that I can actually investigate that idea and use that idea, because all ideas came from somewhere and are going to help me get somewhere else. You'll notice in this note I actually mistyped the source and I have linked to Schechner instead of Schneider, and that's just because their names start in the same way and maybe I, I mispressed a key when I was entering which source I wanted to refer to, or maybe I just got confused. And I have since fixed that mistake, but I point it out here because that's quite a big error that could result in some really bad things down the line. For instance, if I eventually forgot who actually said this thing and I uh, miscited it to Schechner instead of Schneider, what's more, this quote is actually Schneider citing Freed, and so I'm already kind of in murky academic integrity territory by citing the person that's citing the person instead of just citing the original theorist. So I really don't want to mess up this line of thought and who's thinking what about whom. All that to say, just be very careful when you are creating strings of links that lead back to source notes so that you don't accidentally plagiarize or end up miscrediting somebody. And finally, another integral idea within theatre studies is the idea that theatre is representational or a copy of something, which often leads to anti-theatrical sentiments that theatre is fake or pretend and therefore less than. And this is another idea that I hadn't specifically articulated um, on its own in my own subtle casting. Although I have written about anti-theatricality and I've danced around this idea, of course, I haven't actually given a note directly to this core idea. And in this note, I also compare it to the idea of juggling as being real in the eyes of theater theorists, where um, theater is like fake. And then sometimes at the end of writing a note, if I haven't had a chance to um, link all of the related ideas and there's no way to like incorporate those into the actual text of the note, I'll just write tags and then I'll list all of the other links that I think are related to this note, just like I have done here with the word liveness. So that's all I have for you from the note taking, but I wanted to give you a little teaser of how I outline with the notes that I've just created. I will have a video coming up soon specifically about Obsidian Canvas, which is like um, an infinite canvas that is within Obsidian and you can actually move around your notes to outline your papers or create mind maps or do brainstorming or whatever you need. But I'll show you really quickly how I use these notes in my outline. So this is part of my dissertation outline and at the bottom of the screen I have the option to insert an existing note from my Tzadlkasten or to just create a piece of text on this page. So when I open up the search bar for existing notes, the most recent notes are gonna pop up first. So I'm just plopping in a couple of those that I know are gonna be relevant. And then once they're plopped in there, I'm rearranging the existing stuff in my outline to insert these new ideas in ways that make sense uh, in the context of the rest of the outline. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I'm satisfied with the, the linking, with the sort of story, the narrative that I've got going here with these ideas. And then once I'm happy with it, I add the little arrows between the boxes so that I can understand the flow of these ideas and which idea comes next. And that really helps me when I go to write this down. I know exactly what I'm writing first, second, third, etc. And here is what that chain of ideas looks like, just isolated on its own. And you'll notice that there are some of the notes that I just took in this note-taking session within this string of ideas. I hope seeing this note-taking session has helped you better visualize maybe what to do with the readings that you're reading so that you can use them later. I hope that might feel like a more manageable or demystified process now. And if you want more advice on writing, note-taking, productivity, the Tuttlecast and research, 
or anything else you ever might want to learn, then again, I recommend this video sponsor, Skillshare. Use the link below for a 30-day free trial, and then, if you're interested, 40% off a year of Skillshare membership. Happy learning, everybody. Happy note-taking. Feel free to send me additional questions in the comment section below, and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye!